Started with the uh, with the album project that's that's going to be released um, very soon, um, uh, Black Sabbath, the Dio years, and they wanted us to do a couple extra songs, or songs we that we we didn't have anything extra, is what it was. Um, well, we talked about it. Guza and myself talked about it about uh, oh, a couple of years ago. Just sort of mentioning it at the Ozfest, actually, saying it would be nice to do some some other shows, you know, instead of the the last that we've been doing the same show for for ten years. It's like 14, 15 years since I last played those old songs from the Dio era. Some great stuff. Uh, as it happens uh, later on. Uh, uh, they were putting this idea for the record company, uh, putting this album together. And the record company said, have you got a couple of uh, tracks uh, that you'd recorded before that you could use? And I said, well, we have, but it'd be better to, to um, write some new stuff. One over two to England and uh, started to write with Tony. We wrote two, then we wrote three, so easy. Because we've always been, had a really good rapport as writers, always. And it was just so easy. We could have written a whole album in about two weeks, I think. And that's really what happened. It just snowballed into... So, well, maybe we should uh, tour behind this album and play those new songs and... Maybe this is a good time to do it. Well, I had the time, they had the time, so we decided, yeah, it made some sense. Second day and the last day of pre-production, or actually this is production rehearsal, and we're running totally behind schedule. We played last night, but there were hardly any lights, and this is the last day to get all this stuff together, and this is the stage set. So we're gonna keep our fingers crossed and see what happens. My name is Paul Dexter. I'm the production designer for the tour and I'm um, the art director. I design the scenery, the lighting, and uh, I'm scripting the songs now in this facility. I was asked last summer to be involved with this brand new project called Heaven and Hell. And from that point on, I just started to think about ideas. So I went to Stanford. I walked into the church and I saw these arch windows. And I thought, this is perfect for a projection surface and that's really where the idea developed. Everything else stemmed from then with the idea of the stone and, and uh, using the ruined uh, castle and, and, and trying to incorporate a stained glass window look in the center of the set. All of the elements here are coming together for what I consider to be a really ambitious production. For 10 years, of course, we've been playing all the, the old Sabbath stuff. So to, to, to play these is great. Even on the first rehearsal, first song we did, it was very tight. You know, Tony loved being able to you know, suddenly have to come up to a musical standard, and so did Geezer. It was just amazing. Like the, to think that it was 14 years ago since we last uh, worked together, it's it was great. It's just like as if it was last week or something. That's another reason why we probably want to get back together again. One that uh, they probably missed for a long time, playing those songs that had a lot of substance in them. Uh, even Tony said, you know, we got, we've been playing Paranoid now for, you know, the last 12 years with the Ozfest things, and, you know, there's really, 
not much I can do with it. So he just kind of plays the same thing. But these open him up to, to show what a great guitar player he is and to give himself uh, a space to go to that makes him proud of it as well. Ronnie likes a lot of guitar, so it's great for me, and I can get back into playing solos again, as opposed to the routine stuff we've done for the last few years. These three songs that we did, one called An Ear on the Wall, which is obviously very unusual, what's that all about? Or The Shadow of the Wind, which is very, uh, uh, so subliminal that nobody probably knows what it is until they either hear the song and recognize it or until I tell you what it's about. And The Devil Cried, which is the most unusual of them all, uh, the premise being that if you can make the devil cry, then you, he'll send you back to heaven. We just got here to the first gig. Uh, hopefully all this shit's gonna put together. We're gonna do rigging first, mark all the points. Uh, the trusses will come in and um, we'll start bringing in the set and um, then the band gear and, our, and the sound, of course. Uh, this is the set and rigging truck. Uh, so we gotta get all the set pieces out to the side, all the rigging up so the riggers can start hanging our points. Then we'll move to the next truck, which is lighting. Getting everything up and going the first day takes a little extra time and thank everyone involved for giving us a whole day beforehand to set it up. So other than that, just getting the, the crew in the groove and uh, go on with it. One of the guys said he couldn't sleep today because he felt it was like Christmas. It's like Christmas. I love doing load-ins. I just can't wait to get here to get the gig done. Everybody, every single person here is required to do their job. If not, we all suffer from it. Today is a challenge day. And that's what I love about it. Uh, this is our lighting truck, just stacks of lighting truss. We'll get that up in the air and then we can start uh, putting set together. That's where we're at. This would be a cause that I'd come and pay big bucks to go and see, but hey, with this one, I get to come in, watch show, and then after that, tear it out, maybe get a free t shirt and uh, get paid in the end. How much better can you get from it than that, right? I mean, it's not my place to really judge, but I personally think Ronnie and Iomi, you know, they've done their best work with each other. That's the reason that I'm here, I guess. Well, a lot of people say that they're, you know, heavy metal. To me, it's old fashioned rock and roll. Music is music, man. It doesn't matter what it is. That's it's the greatest band ever. What we heard in the, in the rehearsals was blowing everyone away. So. Um, I had a Sabbath Angel of Death tattoo. Geezer actually told me the origin of it. They showed up at a pa um, gig in Phoenix, and the promoter had it on a, a pass, and they just sort of stole it. Everybody in the band has made a legend of their own, right? Then I have a Geezer Butler-inspired uh, tattoo. It's a portrait of him nude. No, it's actually <laughs> uh, from his lyrics, um, Master of Reality. Um, would you like to see the Pope on the end of a rope? Do you think he's a fool? We just got to wait till the backdrop goes up, the lights start hanging and uh, we'll be set to go. And then tomorrow we get to do it all again in front of an audience, at last. Hi, I'm Scott Warren, I'm playing keyboard player. I've been playing with, with Ronnie and Dio for quite a few years now, and uh, I think Tony had come to one of our shows, so he knew what I was about and uh, what I do. I started listening to Black Sabbath. I had a piano in the house, and I just started banging them out, trying to figure out, well, how's that go? You know. And here I am playing with the Thomas Edisons of metal music. And I get a chance to look over and go, ah, it's Geezer Butler playing that bass.